When I was 23 years old, I had a few episodes of rapid heart rate that sent me to my general practitioner. Within a few weeks, I found out that I was at risk for sudden cardiac death. How does that happen to you at 23? What do you do when you have to go back and tell your mother that she might outlive you? Or tell the love of your life who's deployed to Iraq that you might not be here anymore when he gets home? That's everything that I had to do. After I was diagnosed, I took charge of my life. I began to speak up. I started taking medication to help my heart get stronger. I changed my diet and reduced the sodium. I started exercising with a personal trainer to help my heart get stronger. After all of those things, my heart is getting stronger and I'm getting healthier. In July of 2008, I lost my mother to congestive heart failure. It was actually just a few months after I had my daughter and it was a very difficult time for me because at a time when you need your mother to teach you how to be a mother, uh, unfortunately my mother uh, was no longer there. After her passing, I realized that it was an opportunity for me to speak up about heart health issues and so I got involved with the American Heart Association and it's been very rewarding for me. I'm a speaker and I have the opportunity to travel the country speaking to various audiences and I never ever um, leave an audience without sharing the message about heart health and how important it is to know your numbers, to diet, to exercise, and to do the things that we all need to do in order to live long, healthy lives. I never want anyone else to have to go through what I went through unnecessarily. My mom, um, she became a statistic, but I realized I don't have to be a statistic and neither do you. So having heart attack was the last thing on my mind. After about a month of experiencing these flutters in my chest, I had a 10 minute episode of gripping chest pain and shortness of breath that scared me enough to call my doctor. She performed a cardiac cath procedure that found that I had 90% blockage in my LAD artery and they implanted a stent. I have a girlfriend who called me recently to talk to me about some symptoms that she was having. And having gone through what I had gone through myself, she knew that I would be a good resource for her to help educate her about what she was going through. Well, as it turned out, two days later, she goes to the ER and is rushed to a hospital to have two stents put in her heart, and she has coronary artery disease as well. I was 15. We went to lunch, my mother and I and the rest of my family. It seemed like a, a normal day, but that day actually changed our lives forever. Um, what I remember is my mother smoking a cigarette and putting the cigarette out because she didn't feel well. And that cigarette happens to be the last cigarette she ever smoked. She said that she felt dizzy and confused. And you could see when you looked in her eyes, she was very disoriented and was very uncomfortable. And little did she, we know she was having a heart attack right before all of us. Uh, that day, the last thing I remember, one of the only things I remember is her being wheeled away um, by the ambulance. And luckily she survived. And here we are 12 years later. And my mother and I speak out for women everywhere to take good care of their bodies because we are the sole guardians of our heart. My first introduction to the American Heart Association was when I randomly decided to go to the casting call. I don't have a history, a family history of heart disease. I haven't been personally impacted by heart disease, but something was just calling me there. Since then, I have met the most amazing women. These women have taught me that I have to be an advocate for myself. When I had my own scare, I recognized the symptoms because we talk about them. We want everyone to hear about them. And I knew right away what I needed to do. I knew that I needed to get to the emergency room right away to make sure that I truly was okay. When I got there, they did an EKG and a chest x-ray. Both came back that I was fine. They came back with my blood results, showing that I had a blood clot in my lungs. And because I was in the emergency room, they were able to take care of it right away. Because these women chose to speak up, I'm here today. I speak up for my heart 
because I don't want to miss anything. I speak up for my daughter and your daughter. I speak up for my friends, family, and colleagues. I speak up for me because protecting my children's mother is the second most important job that I will ever have. I speak up for women who don't know they're at risk. Speak up. Save lives. Who do you speak up for?